So we've just set off from the chief examiner's house somewhere in Manchester. Don't know where we're going. He's talking to me here, please give me some directions left and right, straight on, that sort of thing. So come along with us and see how we do. We're just keeping out the way of parked cars on the left, at least a door's width away. And rolling up to the traffic lights ahead of us, where we've been told to go right. So just timing this correctly, so hopefully we can get there by the time the lights don't change. Just time that slightly wrong. We're two seconds into the test. Let's hope it doesn't count against us. Left hand shoulder check. Just checking for stuff coming down on the outside. And we're on to like an urban carriageway, dual carriageway. One lane shut for roadworks. Still in a 30. Keeping a nice distance from the van in front. At least two seconds gap if we can help it. Just listening to the old earphones to see what's going on. No direction coming so far so it's straight on is default. Got the board on the left hand side telling us what's going on. We can expect some traffic lights perhaps. A bit of a traffic light junction. Lights are on red. Considering filtering. Not really going to be a huge advantage. I've got this junction to the left of me. Nobody behind wants to go left. But I'll just pull up behind the old Tesla. Tires and tarmac give myself enough space. So if, the, if it does stall or run out of juice or whatever they do, um, we can get around it. Don't want to be pulling up too close behind cars when you're stopped. Just in case that happens. And whilst you're waiting at traffic lights, looking in the mirrors, looking up and down, trying to get a read of the road, kind of hear any sirens coming. What's that pedestrian doing? Are they going to be clear by the time we go? All of these what-ifs running through the old mind all the time. Any cyclists sneaking up on the inside, on the outside? Anything we need to know about before we pull away? What's the van going to do? Is the van going to out-accelerate the Tesla? Really? Okay, Amber, let's go. Do I want to go up the inside of the van? Not really. I'm staying in his mirror so he can see me. I can see the driver's head in the mirror. He knows I'm here. Do I want to get in his blind spot? And also check in this first lane. Got a garage there. Anybody going to come out of the garage? Van driver's pulling in now. He's got plenty of room. We're still in the 30s. There's no real manoeuvre. Car appearing at the left-hand side. Not a danger. Coming into a roundabout by the looks of things. Notice that on the green signage. So waiting for some instructions in the old earpiece and we're going to be going straight on. So immediately looking across the right hand side, can I blend into this roundabout? Traffic lights here, looks to be a traffic light controlled one. Just coming on round. Car heads moving off, silver car waiting, staring at that one, giving it some space. All looks fine. And now being told we need to go down the motorway. So just looking for our gap in these roadworks. We're going to be going left. So just looking up ahead. Where's the gap? Where's our filter lane? There it is. Left again. No need for a shoulder. Check. There's nothing going to be coming. We're into a 40. Now we're on to the motorway sign. So that's a 70. So we can't see across to the right. Looking at the signage, this lane on the right blends into a lane on the motorway and this one then joins it. Always read those because sometimes you're looking to pull out the motorway and it, your lane just becomes lane one. So a good shoulder check over the right hand side, blend it in. Up the inside of the van, nothing's coming. The van's moved over so he obviously knows where he's going or thinks he needs to get into the different lane. So now just conscious we don't want to go up the inside of that van, even though he's pulled into the lane well in advance of when he needed to, really. We've got the 300-100 yard marker posts. Checking the van's not going to cross straight over. We're carrying on down on the M56 by the looks of things. Solid white lines left and right, can't cross over into those chevron signs. Our lane joins the motorway saw that on the blue lane marking signs coming up. 
see they've got three lanes going on and another one merging with us so our lane becomes the lane no need to be looking over your shoulder to get into that lane two fans in lane two not doing the speed limit so now we can move across and overtake sticking at the speed limit because that's the nature of the beast wondering why the van is in that lane you know scratch your head let them do what they want to do and move on now we're reading the signs again which lane do we need to be lane one obviously veers off lanes two three and four carry straight on checking speed checking position in the road as we're overtaking cars we're going to move slightly over in our lane just to give ourselves a bit more space heading towards stockport on the m60 still so again moving over to the right hand side of the lane checking the mirrors though if there's anything coming up in lane four i'd move back over a little bit keeping the distance away from hazards as equal as you can so if there's more space to be had as you're overtaking cars use it if that means you're going to encroach on somebody overtaking you then pull it back in a little bit again nice pace through here still doing 70 on the speedo going past these cars everything's quite happy it's all about keeping that consistency and when we're not overtaking we can then move back into lane one still picking up on this car ahead of us no it looks like it's speeding up a little bit so decisions to be made whether or not to pull in or, or stay out if we pull in we'll be too close behind it two second following rule so we'll just stay where we are we're not holding anybody up behind if we were that would be a different story that car is now pulling out we're turning off so we can swap lanes got the roadwork sign coming up that might affect us it might not the car ahead of us is going a lot slower than we are there's nothing behind shoulder check move out we've got time to overtake that one keeping our speed up our momentum going and then come back in so we're not having to wait for that slower car now we're in the filter lane you can tell by the just by the way it is and also by the lines in the road that we're going to be peeling off fairly shortly so looking up ahead at the blue signage s-pen sign both lanes go where we need to go S-Pen sign again, first left then right. Got some cars ahead of us. So we can use a bit of positioning now just to get an earlier view around this corner. Just waiting for it to open up. Moving back over in our lane. We know we're going to be filtering and blending into another motor at the minute. So moving across into the right hand side might cause us some issues. So just a bit of patience. just looking to see what's happening nice big right hand corner sign we could go up on the inside but we're down into a 40 so no advantage to be made there just pick that speed limit up looking at the brake lights coming on something's happening around this corner we haven't quite seen yet anticipating traffic lights or a roundabout or something going on maybe it's another slip road coming in there's the slip road everything's going to start shuffling let's move over early get our dominant lane position I'm here you're gonna to have to wait for me now or at least I'm at the, your way that van's pushed his way in and we haven't changed speed at all we're just following through and overtaking what's coming round traffic lights sign ahead pick a lane which one do we need looking at all the signage get into a roundabout we want the A34 straight on so again consider filtering up the left up the right could do it given leaving options open decide not to still early days in this test um, too easy to cock up if you're going to start filtering especially when you're on exams you know if there's an obvious filter on then go for it we could have gone but let's just see the lie of the land 
just want to pick up what's on the inside of us, what's on the outside of us. There's plenty of shoulder checks going on. We're in a bit of a sandwich at the minute, which we don't want to be. So let the car go ahead. We can see what's happening. Look at the arrows on the road. Right hand lane, our lane straight on, left hand lane straight on or left. Just making sure nobody wants to jump out from that right hand lane, they all look fine. And we can cross. So we're in the we're in a good lane, good position, good for progress. Keeping to the speed limits and looking up ahead at the van and we've got the three, four, five cars up ahead of the van that we can see. Are any of those going to cause us an issue? Is there anything happening on the left hand side that's going to cause us an issue? So moving right over to the to the right hand side of this carriageway, keeping out the way of the cars. Okay, they might need to swerve, they might need to move. Into a 50, cross the line, off we go. Just up to 50. So just rolling it on briskly. Don't want the front wheel hopping off the ground. But we do want to keep up with the speed limits. Nice aeroplane coming in from above. Three hundred, two hundred, one hundred yard markers for the junction. Junction off. Can anticipate a junction coming on as well. So keeping our eyes out for that happening. Over the top of the bridge. What are we looking for? Just checking out how busy it is. If there's queues of traffic on top of those bridges, we can anticipate things coming in. Moving over to the left hand lane. Good shoulder check left now. What's coming down? Are we going to interfere with those coming in or coming on? Nothing else is going to interfere with us, but we are picking up on this Range Rover, so let's move out. Keeping our speed up, we can just breeze past it. Nice inside view now of where we need to be. We can see inside the black car ahead of us. We can see all the way through. Got another bridge coming up. Pure traffic. Nothing's stopped. Nothing's parked. No flashing amber lights anywhere. We're good to maintain our speed and position. Don't want to stay in the blind spot of this van for too long. So roll that on past them. Roundabout sign coming up. So waiting for instructions from our man. We're going straight on. We're following the A34. So a quick check of the roundabout sign gives us any advance warning of which, di which direction that might be. And now we're planning our roundabout move into a 40. We're planning to stop, but looking to go. We're considering filtering. There's a red light on up ahead. I'm not going to filter. It's just changed to green. So we're going to roll in behind. Keeping an eyes left. We don't want to be alongside any cars. Keep ourselves in that gap. So if a car on the inside does want to swizz, swizz across, we're not right where they need to be. Still in the 40. Eyes up. There's the 50. Off we go. Just wait until you cross the 50 before you put the power on a bit. Nothing behind us. Van's holding a steady speed so we can come into this lane one. On to another roundabout. Another roundabout sign coming up. We're looking right up ahead. Where is the roundabout? There it is. We've got a big sort of white lorry looking at the roundabout itself. Is that going to be still there by the time we get there? We're going to go straight on, straight over. How many lanes have we got? Let's pick a lane. Pick the easiest lane that we need. Hit to a 40. Okay, nope. I think we're being told to go left. So just rolling into this set of traffic. Not starting our roll off for too long back, because that annoys cars. But just by slowing down steady, we can control the deceleration of those behind us. So they're not having to slam on, because they haven't seen, because they're looking in their phone, etc. Truck starts to move, that means we can start moving in a minute. We're on green. Just looking left and right. We know us in the mirrors we can pick up where we need to go. Nope, we're going straight on. So now we just need to make sure what's coming around the outside of us. Pedestrian there hasn't looked like he's pressed the button. 
We're in the left-hand filter lane at the minute, so we need to get out of there. Let some cars do a bit of shuffling. And then coming into some traffic lights. So we've got plenty of road markings. Pick the easiest lane. The lorry's going to be slow away. So let's get past that one. Considering filtering again between the white car, if we can time it right, we should be able to get to the front. Okay. Maybe a missed opportunity there. Just to filter past and beyond. But no harm done. Steady away. Car's indicating to go into the right. We want to go left, so left hand shoulder check, make sure there's nothing on the inside of us. Stay in our lane. Just watch what Range Rover's doing. Does that lane there in filter into this one? Look at the arrows. It looks like it's straight ahead. Nice dip to speed. The cars that aren't accelerating quite as hard as we are can be overtaken. Onto national speed limit. Find the bucket in the road. And carry on. Still on the dual carriageway, always looking ahead, looking for this typical sort of bypass type roads. Straight bit, roundabout, straight bit, roundabout. Picking the best lane is a bit of a lottery sometimes. If you get your observations done early, you can get to the right lane at the right time. Filtering is always an option, but you're going to be leaping out between two cars. So watch what the car does and then commit. Your plan B is always to carry on round the roundabout. So if that white car on the inside decided he didn't want that junction and was going to come on and wipe me out, all I've got to do is push on that right bar and go round the roundabout again. No, I'm done. But just be wary of it. it. Happens more times than you think. Plan B is always just to keep going round. No, I'm done. Just a few more extra metres on the tyre wear. Okay, fans on the left. Then a car, then another van. Seem to be going fairly steady. We'll get past these by the time there's any more junctions, etc. coming up. We can see where the tree line is. The road's going to go around to the right. We've got a triangle sign coming into view about now. That's another roundabout. So already planning our roundabout move. Can I see the roundabout? Which way do I want to go? Waiting for the directions from our examiner behind. Okay, just dropping into the left-hand lane. Waiting to see where these cars are going. Don't want to be up the inside of them, just yet. But they're steady away, round the outside, and away. Always pick the line of least resistance. Okay, round the roundabout, and away. No slowing down. Nice bit of progress made. Dodge the other bucket that was just loose. There might be a builder's van up ahead of us throwing out detritus at the back of his pickup. Nice position to the right. We get an early view past the front of the bonnet of this Range Rover. Which way are we going at the roundabout? Again, considering filtering, if there's snarled up, it looks to be moving. What's coming on to the roundabout? Pick a gap, plan to stop, look to go. Don't get on the inside of a car in case it carries on round. Just keep yourself level with the gap. And now we can use our acceleration to get past the cars. Nothing behind, nothing ahead. We can drop back into lane one. Roundabout sign coming up. Plenty of roundabouts. Lots and lots to practice. Okay, which way are we going? School sign. Look at the time of day. It's a Sunday. Hardly like to affect us at all. Car's coming round. Car's peeling off. Looking at the front wheels gives a direction indicator. Make sure that car doesn't cut the corner. It's turned off. And now we can accelerate. So it's just a standard pattern, standard flow. Get up to speed nicely. We're not hooning off. We're just using the bike. Nice progressive acceleration. You can get up to speed before the cars can. You can pick quite a few off quite easily. Another traffic light sign. Triangle sign. Roundabout. Into lane one. Because there's nothing ahead of us that we need to worry about. It's the default position. 
we're just checking what the roundabout says. Down into a 40, so we must be coming into a built up area. Looking at the signage on the floor, we've got some traffic lights. Two lanes into one, so it becomes a single carriageway. Nothing on the right hand side. We're indicating left into a 30. Nice wide roads to take the dominant position in that road. Let's people know we're coming along. And we can just keep our eyes peeled for any hazards popping up from the left hand side. We're in a 30, so we're expecting cars reversing out of driveways, expecting cyclists, pedestrians, all of the above. Looking up ahead through the trees, what can we see? Got some oncoming vehicles, got a bit of a bridge. Use the furthest point that you can see to then plan your route through it. A few cones on the left hand side there. Not going to encroach on what we're doing. Car pulling out on the right hand side. Has it seen us? Oncoming vehicles are going to stop it pulling out. Then on the left, cars pulling out in front of us. When one pulls out, another one always wants to. It's always a one in, one out. Nice load of bikes there at the garage. Cyclist on the right hand side. There's no danger there. They do tend to just to, to come out into the middle of the road when you least expect it. Queuing cars and traffic lights over this bridge. So just keeping your eyes peeled, expecting stopped traffic. The signs are all there for you. So just rolling off a bit. We're still in the 30, but 30 might not be appropriate now. Lots of parked cars, lots of pedestrians. Bit of cafes by the looks of things. So there's going to be people milling about. What's that red car doing? Pulling out on us. Perfect. Not really pulling out on us, just pulling out. People waiting at the traffic lights. Have they pressed the button? Now they've pressed the button. Cyclist up ahead, taking his lane. Vehicles parked on the right-hand side. Van pulling out of the junction. The cyclist has now disappeared, so it's not a problem anymore. Mind out the way of the van. Cars coming down on the left. Stay clear of them. Make sure they're stopping. Plot a nice route through that village. And now we can just wind up to 30 again. Now we've cleared all those hazards. The more hazards there are, the slower you need to be. Parked car on the right hand side and on the left. We'll just swing out for them, expecting the doors to open, uh, workmen to appear in between those two vans and slide back in out the way of the oncoming vehicles. Dodging the biggest of the potholes that we can without being too, uh, too wild. Is that car reversing on the right or is it there? Just covering the old horn button just in case we started to reverse that would have been a nice two second blast into a 40 two second blast on the horn then a, perhaps a follow up wave just to say look I wasn't actually beeping at you I was just letting you know I was here temporary traffic lights we're first ones there so they probably only just changed and we're probably going to have to stop so roll up to them point the bike in a decent direction so we don't have to swing out past the red light show sign and just relax for a minute. Keep an eyes in the mirror. See what's coming up behind. We've got a few cyclists, haven't we? We've just passed. Where are they? They've caught us up. Shoulder check. And then away. Still in the 30. Just keeping our eyes peeled to what's coming round. There's the end of those work workings. Still in the 40, I should say. Just keeping an eyes peeled on these driveways. It all seems to be fairly quiet. Junction sign coming up. Just check left, check right. Anybody going to appear? Nothing there. On we go. Moving in for the oncoming vehicle. 
It's not the one we can see that's the problem, it's the one behind it that might be heading for an overtake. Nice open corner there so we can apex that one slightly. Look at the state of the road, just avoid the potholes. This is the sort of town where there's lots of Range Rovers, you know, and stuff, so built for this type of road, built for this environment. Still in the 40, just waiting for that 40 sign to disappear. I hope we're going to be coming out of this village fairly soon. So somewhere tucked in the hedge, especially this time of year, is going to be a national speed limit sign. That car needs to stay where he is. He is, that's good. There's our national speed limit sign. And off we go. Traffic lights are staying green. Check left, make sure nobody's going to peep out anyway. And up to speed. Nice open road ahead of us. You can see plenty. Just a time to check the fuel gauges and all the temperature gauges and make sure everything else is right. Looking left, looking right, what can we see? Got some green direction signs, got some cars coming in from the right hand side. Round about here, we're taking first exit. Plan to stop, look to go, blend in into a 50 and stay on the pace. Move in for some oncoming vehicles. Check the traffic lights. Are they going to change or not? Just anticipate how you think they might act. Is that point of no return? Another traffic light sign. So are these going to change or not? Going to Amber. Definitely going to stop. So it's a stop and into neutral. We're going to be here for a while. No need to hang on to the clutch for that long. And off we go. We weren't there for as long as we thought we might have been. But some you win, some you lose. Another junction sign, another crossroad sign. More traffic lights. Which way are we going to go? We're going to be going left. So into the left hand filter lane, just rolling it down because we're on red, cars just seem to have started moving, so get a nice position on the left hand side, it's almost like body language, that's telling everybody else which way you're going to go, it might de deter people from sneaking up on the inside of you. And also allows people that are going straight on to see what they need to see. So shoulder check left just to make sure there's nobody there. After we've checked the mirrors. And off we go. S-Benz. Nice and open so we can go straight across these. Pull into the left hand side for the right hander. Stay in left for the right hander. Stay in left as we can because it's still going right. We've got that tree line, we've got the hedge line. Stay in left until we can see. Now we can see, now we can move. Move in for the vehicles, stay in for the other vehicles. Looking at the tree line, looking at where the car appears from, tells us where the road's going. Move over to the left for the right-handers, move over to the right for the left-handers. It gives you a better and earlier view around the corner. The earlier you can see, the better you can plan. Watching the junctions, always move out for them. Even if it's where your ideal line would need to be. Lovely open views, so once we can see through the corner then we can move. We're still in a 50 limit. So just picking up on those, staying at a nice steady pace. There's no, um, no cruise control or anything. It's just throttle control. Out wide for the corner. As soon as it opens up, we can move. Oncoming vehicles we'll move in for. Junction on the left, we'll move out for that. We'll try and get our eyes inside that junction. There's nothing there. 
will move back over to the left for the oncoming vehicles. Is that lurker behind the slow one is the problem. Back over to that dominant position. Normally where you'd be sat in a car. Keeps you plenty of distance away from the oncoming vehicles and also says, I'm here, mind what you're doing. Okay, sign for farm vehicles, sign for warnings, we can expect mud on the road, we can expect choppy tarmac, we can expect some big machinery. Move over to the left, soon the corner opens up, we've got that full view, we can see everything we need to see. Got some signage. Rolling down. Hit the 40 at 40. Crossroad sign, just check left, check right. Make sure there's nothing there. And it stops becoming a hazard. Always looking up ahead, seeing what's happening. Keep your eyes pinned as far ahead as you can. As you can. Okay, what have we got now? Thirty. Excellent. What we're we doing? Thirties. We look for pedestrians. We look for things. We look for people reversing out at us. We look for oncoming vehicles. There's a different set of hazards to consider. Positioning isn't as important now for view, for stability, it's more biased towards hazard avoidance. So stay over towards the middle a little bit, watch these parked cars. If you've got space, use it. There's nothing on coming, so use that space in the road. Just checking there's nobody lurking around cars at all. You can tell we're in a 30 because of the street lamps. Load of parked cars on the left and on come in as well, so just split the difference between these two. Bearing in mind, there might be people lurking between the cars. Keep, try and keep a doors width apart. If you can't do that, then you're probably going to need to slow down a bit, just in case something happens. Another little roundabout sign coming up. Wondering which direction to go. We're waiting for our man to tell us. It's a straight on. Nobody waiting at the uh, garage to pull out. After garages, there's always a bit of diesel, perhaps spill, that sort of thing. Just be wary of that for the next few hundred yards. Especially on roundabouts. Trying to get an inside view or an outside view past the cars. The ones ahead, that's what's going to tell you what's going on. The white one, you know, that's too close. What's the red one doing? If they put their brakes on, they've seen something that we haven't. Out of the danger zone a little bit, we can come up to 30 again. Keep your eyes peeled left and right. Nothing untoward happening really. We've got a bit of a delivery van on the left. Is there going to be somebody lurking around that? Is it far enough out of our way to not to bother us? Yeah, that's not a worry. So again, just keeping that nice momentum into a roundabout. We want to get to the roundabout with nothing else there. Okay, we're turning right at this one. Shoulder check left, and off we go. Into a 20. Twenties are great, they keep everybody nice and safe. They make everybody fall asleep as well, so if you've got oncoming vehicles, expect them to be on their phones and you know, not really concentrating, then suddenly swerving at the last minute to avoid the speed cushions in the road. 
They're good fun. But now you're in a 20. You know, start to start thinking, where's the end of it? It's going to end somewhere. So keep your eyes peeled for either the 30 sign or the 40. Or the 20 zone ending. So scanning up ahead, looking for those circles. You can't see one. And you're still in a humpy zone. You're probably still in a 20. Got some pedestrians on the right hand side. They might be getting into a car. Expecting doors to open. Give them a wide berth. Bit of a shop there as well. Kids and stuff high on sweets to be running out. Okay, there's our 30 sign that we can see. We've got some Chevron arrows. We've got a car coming. Is this a T-junction or not? Can't really tell by the signage. There's no give way sign. So round we go. Just one of those left-hand turns. Easy to get tripped up. We're in a 30 now, though. Is it appropriate to be doing 30 with all the junctions and houses, etc.? Probably, yeah. Maybe not. So just ride to the conditions. Big gap for the pedestrians. Little kids might fall off their bikes, spill into the road, you know. You've got space. Let them have it. Move in for the oncomings. They're trying to turn left, so get out of their way. There's a bus stop sign there, so we're on a bus route. Can I expect a bus to be hiding around the next corner? Can I expect a bus to be coming the opposite direction? Look left, look right, check the crossroads, off we go. Still in a 30 for the moment. Fairly steady. Just plotting the best line through the potholes. That red car there on the left, what's that one doing? Just slowing down for that, moving away from it. Look at the front wheel to see if it's going to start to turn. The eye contact thing does work occasionally, but you can't trust it. They'll look straight at you and still pull out on you. So just look at the front wheel of a car. If that starts to move, then you know you're moving. Fairly sure that white car there just jumped whatever traffic light it was uh, supposed to be obeying. Yeah, pretty sure that happened. But just rolling up to our traffic light and, and away, so no slowing down now. Keeping out of this trench. Sometimes you can't avoid them. Posty van, he can stay. That's all good. Move out for the parked cars on the left. At least the doors with the park. Got plenty of room to give. Now we can move back in because they aren't coming. And then back out again. Just splitting the difference between these cars and the oncoming ones. Roundabout up ahead. Car waiting on the right, so I'm not going to indicate just yet. We're going to go right, so I'm going to start indicating. Roll onto the roundabout, check they're going around, and around we can go. Keeping that flow. Turning right now, so just swapping lanes. Looking at the traffic lights, looking for my lane. Nothing on coming. Dodge that watery stuff on the road. And around we go. Okay, T junction coming up. Looking for which way we're going. We want to be going right. Looks like it's just changed to red. So we can start slowing down. We're probably going to have to stop. So there's a lane on our left hand side. So I'm going to stop slightly over to the right to get myself out of the way of anything coming up the inside that wants to turn left. Gives me a good view past the car as well. You can see what's on coming. Going away. 
looking over his left shoulder I can see the state of the car is coming down checking the mirrors as well on the right hand side we can see if there's anybody going to sneak up past us doing a perhaps a filtering move another last check left to make sure nobody's jumped the lights and round we go Picking up through these towns. Eyes around all the time. Looking left, looking right. Somebody's turning right. Are they going to be gone by the time we get there? There's no filtering on. We won't be able to get past those cars. So just let it roll up behind. And then away. No stopping. Keep it rolling. Nice position here. Gives us a view down the outside. So we can see what's coming down towards us. And also keeps us far enough away from the oncoming vehicles. Nobody waiting at the crossing. Lights are like unlikely to change. And rolling up to this one. It's a junction there on our left. We don't want to be stopping or blocking that one. So just pick your stop point. To allow any cars that do want to go left access to that Byron Street. Okay. Following along. Same sort of stuff, just seeing what we can see. Steady away. Out of a 30 into a 40. Must be coming out of the town as the speeds start to increase. Car's waiting on the right hand side, just checking that one. Not going to nip out in front of us, so just moving over a little bit. That action of just moving across the road will perhaps help them notice you a bit more as well. That sideways motion is more easy to pick up than a looming motion coming straight towards them. So always just move sideways. If there's nowhere to go, even a little wibble. Just left and right, left and right. Helps the eyeballs pick up the movement. Get another car waiting on the right. He's just whizzed out. Often where there's one, there's another one, so just keep your eyes peeled for the second car coming out of a junction. I think they can chance of luck as well. Car ahead of me is turning right, so I'm moving over to the left to let people behind see what's going on. And also gives me a clear view past. The road's going to narrow in a second. Just saw that sign. That probably means that these uh, chevron signs disappear. There we go. Hatched markings disappearing. Can't wait on the left, move over to the right to avoid that one. Again, staring at the front wheel, as soon as we see any sign of that turning, we're going to be on the brakes. We covered the brakes anyway when we first saw it. Loads of gap, got all this space to use. Past the cars on the left. Still loads of room, and we're out of a 40 to a 50. Nice wide bit of road. We've still got the long white line which means a hazard. So there might still be a few hazards to be aware of on this stretch. Checking the mirrors behind us. There's nobody up close. Nobody's trying to desperately overtake. We've got a left hand corner sign coming up. Then we've got the solid white lines. We've got a queue junction. Beware of queues. So around this corner might be a queue. So I'm moving out wider for an earlier view of that. But covering the brakes as well because I'm happy slowing down around the corner. No queue. Round we go. Just keep that pace back up to 50 again. If you see the signs, you can put them in your plan. If you don't see the signs, that's when you get surprised. Come round the corner, queue of traffic. Keep your eyes peeled on the signage. We've caught these two cars up fairly quickly in the 50. That might mean we've got an overtake opportunity on or 
something to consider and just starting to flow around the corners over to the left for the right hander as soon as we can see that open up now we can move over to the right for the left hander not getting too close to the white line so a man didn't like the idea of straddling the white line with panniers etc there's arguments to be had either way there's our national speed limit sign so no need to come up behind the cars in front of us because of the solid okay there might be an overtake on there but as we accelerate up the cars ahead accelerate as well so just then dropping back to a two second distance the little car ahead is quite close to the car in front of it might be looking for an overtake itself just bearing that in mind if we do put an overtake on don't want to get caught up in somebody else's overtake inside view what can we see a lot another car ahead still on the solids no need to be up close behind the car ahead of us hassling it oncoming vehicles there's no overtake on bearing in mind we're still on a test and we can't put an overtake on if it means breaking the speed limit so happy to go with the flow at the moment we're still cracking on at a reasonable pace if it starts to drop too much then we might consider overtaking at the speed limit got a nice open view of the corner and to the left you can see over the hedge over the verge up the inside we've got that black car ahead of us there's some traffic lights so now we're thinking about maybe filtering coming down into a 40 what are the cars ahead of us doing the lights are going green okay the slow ones are going right let's get in a good gear let's look up the inside of them it's clear go so a nice little overtake there just using our superior acceleration out of a slow corner looks to be a bit twistier we want to put this next car on an overtake as well if we can but it might have to be fairly snappy so we're using the positioning on the road now to see if we can get a better and earlier view around this car to put an overtake in we're in a 50 limit so it's going to have to be fairly fairly opportunistic to be safe and legal cross over the hedges and can start to see where the road's going so just backing off there's no uh, there's not going to be any opportunities on for a minute or two the road's just too twisty and the car is doing the speed limit so always when you're considering an overtake is it going to be safe legal what's the advantage and what's the perception of the car you're overtaking going to be if any one of those is negative then the overtake isn't really on over to the left for the right hander over to the right for the left hander as soon as you can see around the corner then you can move back got some chevron signs this is going to be a tighter corner looking for the exit there it is there we go getting that flow and rhythm into your ride is quite nice sniffing that there might be an overtake on just creeping up behind this car again but no big tractors coming up lots of traffic we'll relax oh, it's popping out on the right hand side give them some room looking through the corner in front of the black car after this corner perhaps is there anything on no traffic light sign may be an opportunity to filter past the traffic lights always thinking ahead how is that going to pan out for us 
If the car driver was nice, he'd move over to the left. Is he nice? No. Absolutely not. Up the inside? Don't fancy it. Could do it. Would have been legal too. But that perception thing would have been a bit cheeky. And also there's all hedge and dirt and dust and stuff. It's just, no. Not going to. Put myself squarely in his outside mirror so he knows I'm there. Just checking over the right shoulder as we pull away. Nothing's coming down. Maybe around this corner up over the hill. Is there? No, red car. Might still be something on, but we've got the arrows there saying get in. Abandon, overtake. Planning. Plan and overtake. Don't necessarily have to carry it out all the time. Just think about them. If you're thinking about them, half the job's done. So when they land in your lap, you're already ahead of the game. The road seems to be opening up a little bit now. So, still might be an overtake on, but the car's doing the speed limit. So just chill out. Just enjoy the surroundings. It's on solid white lines. What are you going to do? Nothing. You're just going to sit there. And be patient. Because that's all you can do sometimes. Could we have gone then? No. There was a junction sign. The car is doing the speed limit. Give it its two second gap and just sit back and relax. You don't always have to overtake everything. But what you can do is start to anticipate where you might. And that's normally around slow corners. So chevrons are good. Look over the top. Out of the corner, is anything on? Anything on? No. What about around this one? Looking for the white lines to finish. Anything on? Uh, no. If you think about it, and you anticipate an overtake, you're always halfway there. Back down into a 40. Overtake mission aborted. Roman signs tucked in on the left, expecting some loose gravel perhaps or some cones. Just keeping our eyes peeled on that. We've come down into a 40, so they must be coming into a built up area. Those clouds look nice. I wonder what Rennie Zellwigger's doing these days. Okay, cars appearing from the right hand side. All looks good. Just checking what we can see. Where's the road going? Using the car ahead of us now to dictate which way the road's going. It's got an earlier view than us. It can see around the corner further than we can. It starts putting its brake lights on. We might need to start slowing down too. As it happens, it's just a nice, clear, plain, plain 40 we're in. Down into a 30 now, so... Adjust positioning for hazard avoidance rather than vision. New highway code rules say give people plenty of space, they cross in front of you. And they also say everybody's got a responsibility to look after themselves, so. Bear that in mind. Just picking our way through this little villagey town place. Got some parked cars on the left. Let's give them all the space they need. Cars width, doors width, sorry. Oncoming vehicle. Stay there till it's seen and then move in a bit. Just lets it know we're coming through. 
it's not a game of chicken. It's just keeping ourselves in their eyesight, in their eye line. If the car driver's thinking, look at me or look at him, they've seen us. It's great. Okay, we've still got our examiner behind. We're still on test, don't forget. We're starting to relax. Okay, roundabout, load of traffic. Can we filter? No. So we're just sussing the job out a little bit here. We might still be able to filter, perhaps when the cars open up straight. Depends where this lot in front of us are going. Just been told we need to go right. Car ahead of us is going right. Aiming to get to the roundabout when there's a gap. Lots of cars coming down. Getting to the gap without stopping is going to be interesting. So we've got to stop. White van's going around the outside of everybody. Fair dues to him. Then we're looking for a gap on our right. And as we go then, we're hoping that the cars coming down are also going to stop. So we're looking at them. Left hand shoulder check. Nothing's coming over. Left hand lane looks fairly busy, so I'm staying in the right hand lane. Left hand lane looks very busy. I wonder why that is. Now I'm checking for people doing U-turns. Really be vigilant. Cars waiting there too long, you know, suddenly switching into your lane. Okay. Traffic signs there look, on the right hand side saying left hand lane is a dead end or no through road. You only go left. We want to go straight on. So we're in the right lane anyway. I was lucky. And now we're still considering filtering. Okay, there's a nice big gap there, look. There's some There's some chevrons bordered by a dotted line, so we could definitely use that. I can see the traffic on the roundabout is fairly stopped, so let's have a filter. Nobody's going. There's no gaps. Just fall in behind this car. And then all of a sudden, look. That's why the traffic's bad. Road closed. Change of plan. Keep going round. Looking on the inside to where that car was. Round the outside of that one. Could have gone round the roundabout and back up, I suppose. That would have been a bit cheeky. But, change of plan. Man's in the air saying, let's go back to where we come for a minute. So that's no worries. We'll avoid the pedestrian cyclist there. We're on green. And we're seeing all this queue of traffic. We just want to get out of this town, really, because that's uh, it's a bit of a snarl up. First exit at the roundabout. This is the one we just come in on. So, looking at the cars coming down, anybody coming around our way, nope, round we go. We've just been along here, so we understand what's there. Same old story, we're in a 30, position for safety. over vision. We always give up our position for safety anyway, but in a 30, positioning for a better view around the corner is less important because the speed's not so high. Nice view all the way down through this bit of road. We can straight line all of that, no need to go in and out of the corners. Find this van appearing on the left. Give him a wide berth. That's all fine. And up over the hill. Dodging drain covers and potholes, etc. As best we can. Into a 40. It's 
looking through the corners, seeing what we can see. Moving out for the car that just appeared in, then back in for the oncoming vehicles. Blending it round, keeping it as smooth as possible. Nice, smooth steering inputs. Carving those corners. Just painting that line to follow on the road in your mind. That smoothest line between hazards, between potholes. And the best line to enable you to see further around corners. Into a 50. Got some S Bend signs coming up. We've been down this road before, it's a bit like deja vu but in reverse. Picking up on the paint markings, we've got the slow on the road, tells us how sharp the corners are going to be. We've got the cattle grid there, expecting some knock on the road, so stay in the car tracks. At least you know the car tyres would have cleaned up any, any loose dirt. Don't seem to be catching this car up very quick, so that must be doing the speed limit. Got the corner on the left, got the slow junction on the, the corner, just over the crest there. That one's all fine. Still quite a nice day, a bit breezy. Getting blown around a little bit, but nothing to worry about. I like your corner signs. Slow in the road. Round we go, around the corner. Being able to stop in the distance we can see at all times. And just blending stuff together. It's starting to get a little bit, you know, a bit samey been down this road already there's our traffic light sign over the top of the hill expecting a cure traffic there isn't one traffic lights are on green are they going to stay green for us past the point of no return into the bridge don't cut that corner off because there's a car there and then round we go again avoid the potholes drive around the corners. Over to the left for the right-handers, over to the right for the left-handers. We've been through this. We know what we're doing now. As soon as you can see, you can move over. High hedges, limit point of vision is nice and easy to use. We've got the cars ahead telling us which way the car's going, which way the road's going. We're still doing a 50 and a 50. There's no overtakes on, so plenty of distance between the car ahead and ourselves. Move in for the slow stuff. On coming, we're staying over to the left of the right hander. And we've got the crossroad sign there, just keep our eyes peeled for that one. Make sure there's nothing waiting to come out. Nothing there, it's all fine. And then we can build it back up again to a reasonable speed. Over to the left for the right hander. We've got the S-Bend sign, first left then right. That means our approach to the left is going to be a little bit slower, knowing that we've got to get back over to the right again. See round the corner, keeping that car in our vision if we can, 
helps us out, tells us how sharp the corner is. Move in for the oncoming. Back over to the left for the right hander. Using that telegraph pole as a gauge. Okay, crossroad sign again. This is where we turned right and pulled an overtake off. Looks like we're going straight on this time. So rolling up these traffic lights, don't really want to stop if we can help it. Thank you for the car ahead, he's going left, so that's telling me which way I need to be. We are going to stop, but we're going to use tyres and tarmac. So if you can see tar the tyres of the car ahead of you, and a bit of tarmac, you know, you stopped far enough away. Into a 40, as we go through the junction, look left, look right. Into a 50. And away, okay. Now we're at the front, that's good. What can we see up ahead of us? Junction signs on the left. We've got slow in the road. We've got corner signs. Moving over to the left to the right-hander. S-Bend sign, Chevron, slow in the road. Okay. Looking through the corner. Where does it go? There it is, it straightens up. Pinch a bit of that one. Round we go. Over to the left of the right-hander. Opens up. Back over to the right. Staying over to the right so we can see round. Pitch it in. Oncoming vehicle. No. Moving into the left. There's our oncoming vehicle. Just staying away from those. And keep it to the speed limit. Staying out so we can see further. But bearing in mind we need to give up that position if something's oncoming. bit of grass and stuff cut there on the left. Looks to be, to be a, a private residence there that's happened. Not like a, a hedge cut on a tractor or anything. Chevron signs over to the right for the left-hander. See around it. Now we can move. Bit of dirt there on the road. Only a bit. Don't let it worry you. Car just disappearing round to the left. Cyclist going like stink. And another one. Now we're catching this car up. Is there going to be an overtake on? We've caught the car up pretty quickly. Just waiting to see if there's going to be an opportunity. Judging the speed of the car, compared to our maximum speed of 50 along here, there may or may not be an overtake on. We're trying to get an inside view. We've got some chevrons, got some cars coming down. Have we got an inside view? Have we got an outside view? There's the inside view. Oncoming car. The car's accelerated up to 50. There's no overtake on. Got these hidden dips as well. Would be a bit awkward getting past them there. So keeping back a bit from the car ahead of us allows us to see a bit further past the car. That extra distance we can catch up in a blink of an eye, so it's not a massive issue. We can also get a nice view underneath the car on these, some of these hills and crests. So using our positioning now to get a better view around the corner, perhaps there might be an overtake on outside of one of these corners. A right hand corner with a bit of a slope. Got some pedestrian signs any opportunities. Not here, there's not. Got some chevron signs up ahead. Any opportunity coming off this corner? Nope. Solid white line. Just looking up, where's that road going? Can we see where it goes? Coming to a bit of a valley, a bit of a hill. We might get a, an opportunity to look up ahead to see if there's anything else we can spot. Okay, looking round to the right now, we've got the road coming all the way down. We can see the road going all the way up round to the right. See there's two cars coming down. Keep your eye pinned on the last one, that red car there on the right. 
Now there's an overtake on, after that red car has gone past. Okay, that red car, so a bit slow into this overtake, but we know that car is going to be slow down that corner. Plenty of time to get back in for that one. And a nice little nippy overtake there. Held off a little bit as the red car came around the corner, just in case the white car started to encroach on our side. No speed limits broken. Nobody got in a panic. Nicely planned overtake. Now we can use the road. We can stick to our speed. And again, looking down over the tops, we can see some cars coming around. We see how sharp these corners are. There's nothing big there. There's nothing we're going to need to get out of the way of. So just planning a nice smooth corner all the way in and all the way out. Same again, nice cross view, nothing coming round. So round we go. Coming up behind another car now, a bit of a downhill section by the looks of things. Another car ahead, we've got the slippy road signs on the Radiant sign we just went past. So an inside view. Is that going to tell us anything? Underneath view. That's not telling us much. We haven't got enough of a distance to uh, to attempt anything here. You can see how the land lies. It looks like it's going down through these through the middle of this sort of. It's been like an old rain gully or something, perhaps. And the cars are moving on fairly well. Crossroads in the right-hand corner. Checking left, checking right at the crossroads to make sure there's no cars there. And again, cross view. From the right, we've got a white car going away from us over that bridge. Anything coming down is what we're interested in. And that wider picture, what's going on elsewhere got an S-Ben sign got a dead rabbit to avoid ok, loads of chevrons I've got some houses there on the left this looks like a car's going up on the left looks like a hairpin coming up so, look through the corner drive it round no dramas. Still in a 50. Two cars ahead of us. Contemplating an overtake perhaps because we have caught these two cars up. There's nothing going to be on for a minute or two by the looks of things. Okay. Car heads indicating left, so we'll just let them go. Now we can pick it back up to 50 to see if we catch this other car up. If we catch the other car up pretty quick, we know we can get an overtake in. And sure enough, we're doing 50 and we've caught up with that car really quickly. So we definitely need to get past this one. There's our opportunity. Staying at 50. Just driving past. Giving it as plenty as much room as we can. Back in again. No need to indicate. It's obviously what was going to happen. Over the crest of the hill. Where's the road going? We can see it going all the way down and round to the left. So let's just stay at 50. And follow it along. Uneven road sign, so expecting some humps and bumps. Following that car movement across the left, you can see where our corner goes. Using the wall, bringing it back round. As many clues as you can use to help you on your way is what we need. 
We're catching this next car up fairly quick as well, though, looks of things. So we're still doing 50. The car ahead's doing less than that. Is there going to be an opportunity that arrives for us? It's got a cyclist there on the left. Can't see around the right-hand corner, so just rolling off. There is a car hidden then. So, pass the cyclist and back up to a 50 again. It's a few up and downy bits, which is fine. You can see the roads opened out nicely there. Got another car going off in the distance, you can just about make out. Got some pedestrians, give them some space. We got the left and right corner coming up. Looking up round to the left, we can see the hedge line or the wall line. That's where the road's going. So we can move over to the left for the right hander. Let's see what comes next. Got the car going away in the distance on the right hand side there and we've got what looks to be a load of cars parked and a lay-by on the left so whilst there might have been an overtake on there we would have been coming in where that lay-by lives and there's people milling around there's stuff that's going on treat lay-bys like junctions so definitely wasn't interested in putting an overtake on there just in case anybody started to move out of that lay-by that hadn't spotted us previously Taking in the views, finding the sheep. Staying over to the right for the left hander. I've got an inside view of this uh, this car. Roads opened up nice again. Just casting your eye all the way along. What's happening up ahead? As far as you can see. Got another lay by there on the right hand side. So another overtake here. You know, if you weren't on test, you'd have to very consider people pulling out of that lay-by. Even though the road's clear, treat that like a junction. Quite a nice spot up here, isn't it? Isn't it nice? Look at the clouds. They're lovely. Sorry, they're not clouds, are they? They're, uh, you know, chemtrails. No, they're clouds. Okay, road's opened up. We're doing 50. The car is having a look at the clouds, too. We just take that opportunity because we can. And it was there. Just cut the corner off because we could see over the top of the hedge. And there was our overtake. So still looking out, we've got some cars coming down to the left there, we can see like little white dots coming down. There's our junction sign. We can tell that these two roads are going to join. There's our sign telling us who's got right away. So a good left hand shoulder check, see what's coming down. Coming up. And then looking up ahead, see what's coming down. There's our giveaway signs. Nothing, nothing. On we go. We've got the Beware Gritter signs on the old road there, so just check in the middle of the road for that loose gravel. If you're unsure, stick in the wheel tracks of the cars. If you're still unsure, but you're, you know, you're feeling brave. If you run over the middle on a straight bit, you'll hear all the gravel tinking off your, you know, throwing tar and grit and stuff all over your bike so if you start hearing that slow down keeping in the wheel tracks of the cars because that's where it's going to brush the gravel off 
looking to see what's coming up the hill. You might be able to hear the old bit of gravel ticking away, but there's not a lot. So it's not really going to be an issue. Looking round to the left, you can see our car is going away from us. Got some bikes coming up. That's telling us exactly where the road's going, so we can see exactly what we need to see. Always cast your eye, always as far as you can see, into the distance. Yeah, what are you going to see? Blue lights, lorries, something, anything. If you've seen it, you can deal with it. Don't just look at this corner now. Look at that one, that red car coming up. Did you see it? Chevron signs tells us where the corner was, but we've already seen the corner because we had a look at the cross view a few seconds ago. We know where we need to be. You can see over the top of the arm coast, we can cut this corner off, apex it if you like. Following these two down. Just rolling off on the throttle, using the throttle to control our speed, keeping way over to the left for the right-handers. So if you look at the white line, you can see how scrubbed out it is, so people have been cutting corners, etc. Over the left there, there's a load of houses, they look nice, don't they? So that means you're coming into a bit of a built-up area. Built-up areas mean 30 limits, so we can start to anticipate a speed limit change. Over the top of the wall we can see a junction and a big queue of cars and there's our speed limit change. So just trying to roll up behind, don't really want to be starting and stopping all the time but a nice little trickle, nice little walking pace manoeuvre would be ideal. Cars parked on the right hand side there means that cars coming towards us are going to be over in our lane a little bit. Okay, so it looks like we've got to stop. And notice the big stop sign. We know what they mean, don't you? Yep. We've got to stop. I don't even bother looking. Just see the white line that's faded out. Stop. Then look. Then decide if you want to go or not. That's an easy way to fail a test, that is, treating a stop sign like a give way. So if you see the stop sign, stop. Then look. That way you're not tempted to stop for a nanosecond or, you know, less. In fact, you can stop for a nanosecond, that'd be fine. But make it a definite stop. I've seen the stop sign, I've stopped. Then you can look. So we're in the 30, just dropping down through into, this is Buxton. Nice wide bit of road, plenty of people parked on the left and right hand side of it. See what's coming up. Just about make out some traffic lights up ahead. Could we filter? Maybe, but everything seems to be moving okay. or let it carry on. Just passing the point of no return on the traffic lights. Check left, check right. Nobody's going to jump out on us. And on we go. So that is coming up to about an hour and 20 minutes there and a half on the test. We're starting to think to ourselves it's probably nearly done by now, surely. Concentrating like this for that length of time is a skill in itself. Keeping your eyes peeled on every last little thing that you need to look at. Keeping things smooth, anticipating stuff happening every five seconds. Understanding what people may or may not do. There's always something new to be looking at. 
So just prioritise the hazards. What can we see? What can't we see? What can we reasonably expect to happen? So the cars are all moving away from us ahead. So we know by the time we get there, we'll be moving away pretty fine. So that's how you can start to sort of relax when you're riding. Look at what other people are doing. If they look like they're doing stuff okay, it should be okay. So everybody's stopped now. And is this a big snarly up jam? Or is there something else going on? There's a junction there on the right hand side. I'm considering filtering down the outside here. But I can see a car has just stopped there. That makes me nervous and suspicious. We've got another car trying to reverse on the other side of the road. And that car that stopped is just a police car. Why are they stopped there? I have no idea. They just stop them. So we'll just avoid all these bikes and cars and stuff as best we can. The traffic seems to be moving fine now, so maybe that was just, you know, confusing people a little bit. Got a park car parked on the right hand side. Oops. Is it gonna sneak out or not? Don't think so. Considered letting it out, I thought no. One test. There's nobody really behind us anyway. So they could just pull out behind. So I'm being told now that uh, we'll need to pull over in a little bit, and that's the end of the test. So there's a little junction up here on the left. We'll perhaps use that. That's a little out the way spot to, uh, to have a chin wag. Still time in this sort of like slow manoeuvring so we don't actually have to stop every three seconds. And keeping our eyes peeled down the outside. So if the car is two or three ahead of moving, you know we're gonna be moving fairly soon as well. So that's the little technique for that one. If they're all stopped, we'll probably have to stop too. So quite enjoyed that little run nice to sort of get out and about hone these skills on the blue ribbon test they use the same book of words as Rossborough and the IAM so it's very similar riding style same plan same it's going to save everything else we don't seem to be too worried about parking on double, double yellows but we're not really parked and that's it thanks folks catch you next time